all parents in the autism world deal with tons of stress. It can be very overwhelming. A lot of times can be difficult to find ways to reduce stress in our lives. I know I've been there and I'm still there as both a parent and as a professional. So today we're going to talk about reducing stress. Hi, I'm Dr. Mary Barbera, autism mom, board certified behavior analyst, online course creator, and best-selling author of The Verbal Behavior Approach. Each week, I provide you with some of my ideas about turning autism around. So if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do that now. Today, I'm sharing a small excerpt from a recent podcast episode with developmental pediatrician, Dr. James Copeland. He gives wise advice for both parents and professionals and ideas on how we can all reduce stress in our lives. So are there, what are the key um, advice, pieces of advice, strategies you can give to uh, reduce stress in the adults' lives and, and um Anything for sure. parents or professionals or the same advice for either? So I, I read a, um, you have a video blog by Lori Unum, if I'm pronouncing her name right, U-N-U-M-B. Unum, and yeah. she's, she's a yeah. podcaster, yeah. I mean, she's, uh, she came on my podcast, uh, I forget what. what attorney, you know, but like you, a very um, high-powered, achieving person, dynamic person, and she said, look, we finally got used to the fact that we're just not going to be perfect. If our kids' clothes don't match one day, that's okay. It's all right. And I can also speak from personal experience, having had the opposite experience in my family of origin, where everything had to be just so. And in fact, in the long run, that was more destructive to my sister's development and to all of our mental health than, than just saying, you know, life is imperfect. It's okay. And I think parents need to uh, guard against their folks out in the autism world who are fear mongers and they, they sense that they can capitalize on parents' anxiety as a way of um, making a quick dollar, to be very blunt about it. And they sort of engage in fear mongering. If you don't do this, your child is doomed, kind of an approach. And it, The problem is it's a Greek chorus, and there are these people over here saying it, those people over there saying it, those people over there saying it, and parents are thrown into a panic, uh, even more so than they need to be. Um, So you, this is not, your child is not a little bottle of nitroglycerin, and if you handle it wrong, it's going to explode and everything is lost. It's not like that. Children are very resilient. Even kids on the spectrum are resilient. Uh, Parenting is trial and error. If you're, if you're the parents of a one and only typically developing child and you're learning as you go, your kid is resilient and they're going to withstand most of, of your gaffes without a long-term consequence. And this is not a do or die situation. Um, and in fact, uh, being a little bit unwound is good. Um, bear in mind that the reverse genetics there's a chance that as the parent of a kid on the spectrum, you may have more than a touch of anxiety or perfectionism yourself. Get in touch with that, learn how to let that go, exercise, do yoga, meet with friends, whatever it is. Um, I had a very good colleague um, who once uh, said, Ruby Salazar, and she was a a therapist who said this, your child with disability is a member of your family, but your child's disability should not become the center of your family. And I think those are words to take to heart. if I could say anything, if I could go back 60 years and talk to my father, you know, you were talking on your 20 years later blog post, what would you say to your younger self? That's what I would go back and say to my dad. Um, of course, I can't all over, but that's what I would say is that it's okay if you didn't get the clothes done today, it's okay. Um, and you've got to you know, pick which hill you're going to die on, so to speak. And most things aren't worth it. Um, and if you only, and I had a mother tell me this, if I only get 95% of the things on my checklist done tonight, that's okay. And this was another mom. And, you know, the rock kind of lifted off her shoulders. And she actually also said, and if there's some days, and this was a kid who had CP, he had drooling, and she said, and I didn't want to touch his poopy diaper, and I didn't want to touch his drool. And I looked in the mirror at first, and I thought, what kind of a terrible mother am I? 
And then I realized all those feelings are okay. All those feelings are okay. And you can see her just sit up in her chair. And all of that is okay. Those feelings are okay. And be kind to yourself. And then the next day you pick up the cudgel and you start again. And it's, it's all right. And, you know, take a deep breath. And you said something on your blog post, which is how I also closed my book with the very same line. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. And uh, you've got to pace yourself and save some of your energy for the next month. And I actually say it's a marathon on a roller coaster because a lot of times, a lot exactly. of times it's, it's not a straight course. And there's lots no, that's of right. downs and lots of taking two steps forward, one step back. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is trial and error. And you're, it's going to constantly be changing what you need to do. And, and I wouldn't get too focused, like you said, don't get too focused on where your child's at on the spectrum. I mean, he's a person with strengths and weaknesses and um, we just have wanted just continually like Lucas, you know, I, my goal is that he reaches fullest potential and he continue to reach his fullest potential. It's not a finite thing. Uh, he's only in his early twenties. So that bar has to stay high. So he remains reaching his fullest potential, whatever comes down the pike. And um, we talked, you know, be as independent, as safe as possible, and as happy as possible. And that really is the goal, I think, for, for all our kids, whether they have autism mm -hmm. or not. I hope you enjoyed this short snippet from the podcast. If you want more content, check out the podcast at marybarbera.com forward slash podcast. Wherever you're watching this, I'd love it if you would leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, share this video with others who may benefit. And for more information, you can attend a free online workshop at marybarbera.com forward slash workshop. And I'll see you right here next week.